The thing that I'll tell you right off the bat before we even talk about this game is that it's very clear that Entry Point is simply a ripoff of Payday 2. So if you're thinking about playing Entry Point from seeing this video, don't do that. <laughs> Go play Payday 2 because Payday 2 is better in every conceivable way. If I went in guns blazing on a higher difficulty, I would end up paying more to bring the weapons with me and the armor than I would getting out of the contract. Opening doors in entry point sucks. Why is it so hard to open doors? The developers behind this game that they effectively copied almost one for one didn't realize these things while making it. Like what happened? You had the blueprint right there and you still screwed it up. How? Get it out of the way as quick as I can. The story is not good. I'm not surprised that it's not good because it's a Roblox game. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'll be honest, when I first heard that Eclipse had made a video on Entry Point, I was genuinely excited. For the first time in a long time, Entry Point was put in the spotlight of a larger YouTuber. Over time, we've had some larger content creators cover the game, such as Tankfish or Albers, but they played the game years ago, before it was complete, and didn't really experience the full thing. You can imagine my excitement when I heard that Eclipse, a YouTuber I used to watch for YBA content all the time back in 2021, <coughs> made a video on our game. To say that I was disappointed would be a bit of an understatement. I'm not usually the type to make this kind of video, but something clicked in my mind when I saw this. There is a lot to unpack here, and before I get ahead of myself, I think it's a good idea to go through all the points Eclipse made. Starting first with Stealth vs Loud. The very first thing I want to refute is, well... Now I'll get one thing out of the way right away, and that's that I am awful at the stealth in these games, whether it be Payday 2 or Entry Point, I'm terrible at both of them. I just can't stealth. I'm so bad. Skill issue. Look, someone had to say it. It's not my point though. My point is, EP was made to be a stealth game. From the very start, almost every mechanic, including doors, which we'll get to later, was made with stealth in mind. From the game's description, this is directly stated, Entry Point is a stealth action FPS created by Freefall Softworks. Sashado, the sole developer of the game, and yes, I said sole developer, also stated this back in my podcast in 2019. Eclipse made a few points where he talked about how there was the, the developers of this game didn't do X, Y, or Z, and I think it's worth saying that this was one person. This is a single person working on the game. So anyway, it's clear from all this that Entry Point is, by definition, a stealth game. Loud is absolutely a mechanic that was fully intended and implemented, but I think most EP players would agree that stealth is where the game truly shines. So why am I saying this then? Well, in Eclipse's review, he made it pretty clear through his gameplay that he only covered the loud portion of the game. This meant the entire review only covered half of what the game had to offer, and to me that just feels wrong. There's so much more gameplay and nuance to the stealth side of EP, and it was completely missed in this review, all because Eclipse just couldn't do it. That being said, it may have something to do with the amount that he actually read and learnt before playing the game. Because this... ...and this... ...tells the whole story. I will probably return to this point later, but the entire review feels like it was made on a 4 hour time budget. I did a little bit of digging, and by that I mean I checked his channel, I found that he has an upload schedule of every few days or so. And to be honest, I completely admire this work ethic. I mean, look at my channel, this thing is a graveyard. The point is, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I think Eclipse never took the time to really take apart the game, read the help dialogue, read the mission briefs, or actually understand what he was doing before rushing into missions. It feels like this video was rushed, maybe to hit that consistent upload schedule. I don't know, maybe I'm completely overanalyzing this. But let's move on to another big point. The biggest point that I'm sure pissed off a lot of the entry point community was the comment about the power trip and how being OP and shooting down SWAT left, right, and center is part of the entry point experience or whatever. To that, 
I raise him Nanmild, or Hilfsnimnus. What do these acronyms mean? It doesn't really matter, because the only part that matters is the L. L being for legend. What I'm trying to say is that the difficulty of missions matter a lot in entry points. Missions can absolutely be done on higher difficulties alone, and they do yield greater rewards. A point Eclipse made in his video was that he saw the cost requirements of deploying in higher difficulty missions and assumed that he would lose money even if he completed the mission successfully. This just straight up isn't true. The amount of money you get from completing a mission at entry point scales with the difficulty, so you never lose money when you finish a mission, at least successfully. I'm fully aware that the actual money you get from playing each mission isn't listed anywhere, so the only way you'd figure this out is by playing the mission or looking it up on the wiki. As such, Eclipse's point is somewhat valid. He would have no way of knowing that harder missions pay more money. But I mean, come on, that kind of should have been a given. This just further proves my point. Eclipse never played on any other difficulties than just Rookie. His point that it feels good to be immortal further extenuates this issue. He never tried to challenge himself, so he ended up playing a game with little to no difficulty or skill needed. The whole point of the game is to level up, get new skill points, and play more difficult versions of the same mission, usually to get badges or more money to buy better weapons. Eclipse completely missed the mark here by avoiding the very thing that this game was made for. Of the entire video, I think this point was the most interesting. Eclipse brought up the ammo capacity, how it functions in entry point, and why it was annoying to deal with. And in some regards, I understand where he's coming from especially with that big comparison he made all throughout the video to another game that I'll talk about later. But I'll say this, ammo isn't something I ever really thought about when playing the game. Maybe this is because I leveled up most of my characters through stealth instead of loud, meaning I didn't shoot nearly as much, but even when I was leveling up my loud characters, I never really felt the need to complain about ammo. Except maybe the thumper, this thing straight up has no ammo if you don't have the ammo vest. Eclipse's point still stands though. Entry point's ammo system is not intuitive, and it's definitely RNG based for the different weapons enemies spawn with. I'll be honest, it's getting harder and harder to avoid the two words that really want to leave my mouth right now. Skill issue. Skill tree! Skill tree! Yeah, that's what I meant to say. This is a pretty small point, because there's just one thing I'd like to refute from the video. Eclipse talked about how there were only smaller perks that didn't really add to anything unless you were a higher level and can actually fit them together, like 5% more drill speed or whatever. And to me, that kind of fits in with the whole on a schedule thing. I don't think he actually looked at the rest of the skill tree. There's very clearly larger nodes that make a difference. They're emphasized by the size of their bubble. They include things like firebug for torches, steady aim to run with a gun, and so much more. Hey, what's that note over there? The point Eclipse made about doors was somewhat confusing to me at first, but then I remembered he was playing alone and on rookie difficulty with no prior knowledge of other means to get through them. To a brand new player, having to deal with these annoying long progress bars for drilling through doors is completely justified. I probably thought the exact same thing when I played loud for the first time. But that doesn't mean that there aren't ways to get around it. Drill is just one of many ways to open doors, and they're almost never used by top players anymore except for in very niche scenarios. This could range anywhere from the black site cell doors, to see where Rose is, to the silent drill being used to open the operator door in stealth for Black Dusk. But drills are literally never used to open doors anymore, and there's a very good reason for that. Yeah, they're just straight up outclassed in every way. But I don't see this as a straight up rebuttal to Eclipse's point. While drills are basically redundant in a lot of meta runs, the actual means to use breaching charges are locked behind a skill node, something that no one has access to when they first start playing the game. So yes, while drills make doors painfully slow, there's definitely better options out there, like shooting the handle if it's a wooden door, or getting a different class that can hack doors or pick locks. The last thing that we have to talk about is the story, and it's kind of ass, so I'll just get it out of the way as quick as I can. The story is not good. I'm not surprised that it's not good because it's a Roblox game. <sighs> Look, Entry Point's story is complicated. What Eclipse said was right from a technical sense. All the player sees when they play the game is a story, told out of order, with a sappy ending about the main character blowing themselves up to save the organization. But there's absolutely more to it, and that's where the issue stems from. The quality of the story you experience is directly proportional to the amount of time you spend trying to learn about it. I've played this game for years. I started playing this game back in 2018, when the only mission available to play was the Kill House, back when Sashado was still testing features that would be implemented into the main game. I grew up with this game. I experienced each individual mission come out, one at a time, with months of anticipation in between. This, 
to answer Eclipse's question on why the story was told out of order is why. As each month passed and a different mission, usually told somewhere else in the timeline, was revealed, more and more of this unusual story was told. It was like watching a TV series with months between each episode. The entire community worked together to create countless different theories for what mission would come out next and what stories would be told. To be honest, I missed those days. I missed being able to wait in anticipation for the next entry point mission to come out. This isn't how it works anymore, though. Now, each mission is revealed out of order within minutes. The player doesn't have time to process or try and fit together the story over the span of many months. And as such, Eclipse's review of the story was completely accurate. Without looking any deeper at what lies under the surface, the story seems cliché, bland, even though most Roblox games have little to no story to begin with. All of this combined with the fact that he never expected to have a story at all. Well, from the very beginning, this review was doomed to be negative, for one reason alone. The immediate comparison to Payday 2 shocked me, but to be fair, I've never played Payday 2 before, and I wasn't about to start to make this video. That's why I decided to ask someone who had played both a lot. Meet Mr. Weeb. I've known him for a while now, and I've even had him on my podcast once. So, just a couple questions. Um, first of all, how many hours do you actually have in Payday 2? Uh, I have about... 460 hours. Okay, that's a lot. I think that's reasonable to say that you have, you're have able to make a good comparison here. Um, I guess the first question would be, how do you describe Payday's Loud? So, you know, there's objectives you gotta do. There's a lot of enemies. There's a lot of different types of enemies. Uh, there's, like, just standard SWAT. There's, like, shield units, which you have to either, like, get around or use certain weapons to either, like, penetrate or, like, just blow them up. There's medics, which can like heal their units. There's tasers that can stun you. There's snipers that, depending on the circumstances, can like just one-shot you on higher difficulties. There's, you know, just a lot of things to consider. Um, what about Payday 2 Stealth? Is it the same thing as what we know I think of as Entry Point? Uh, I would say it's pretty different from Entry Point. You, uh... Because basically, you start in pacing mode, where you just walk around, and for the most part, you're not really detected unless you, like, bump into a guard. And then, once you're ready, you'll put on your mask, and for the most part, you cannot take your mask off except for a few specific exceptions at, like, the ends of some heists. Uh, but basically, once you're masked up, like, everyone will detect you if they see you. So knowing this and all of Point's mechanics, would you say that Entry Point is a ripoff of Payday 2 in any way? Well, so cause in any way, like I'd say, like maybe like the wave break system, but even then, like it's like not as complex. It's a pretty simple thing, and I don't think it's like outrageous to say that, like you it's know, inspired. a wave. Entry Point was definitely inspired by Payday 2. And there's a lot of games that are similar to those in that same genre about the wave system and, you know, going yeah, to stealth. Yeah, wave, wave system yeah. isn't like a Payday 2 thing. It's not. It's a, it's a general it's idea. Like that. And it's certainly something that, that's common among a lot of games. In Payday 2, you, like, it's mainly probably just because there's, like, so many different guns, but when you kill an enemy, they drop ammo, and you that ammo refills uh, both your guns, no matter which gun it is, except for a few exceptions, but basically it's just, they drop global ammo. Yeah, it puts me that point in his video, and in, that, in some yeah. ways, that yeah. further proves that it's not supposed to be a ripoff of Payday 2, but rather just a completely different game entirely, right? There's a whole yeah, they, level they, of they, they, like, depth to it. Like, ammo is kind of supposed to be a problem. Like, they were complaining about having to run around and, and go get ammo, but like, yeah, you should have to make sure you don't have to get stuck running around to go get ammo. But there's just this, like a lot of differences between the two games that I think it would it's really a stretch to say that entry points are rip off of Payday 2, like especially in stealth. Like stealth plays completely differently with like getting a disguise, uh, luring mechanics, and as I mentioned earlier, just the ability to just take people out. And like there's just I think it's really a stretch to call it a ripoff. Yeah, for sure. 
All right. Thank you for your time. No problem. To me, I think the biggest argument here is the message Sasato posted when first making the game. Entry Point was something that was meant to be inspired by other hit games in a similar genre, such as Metal Gear Solid, Hitman, and yes, Payday 2. But it was never meant to be a cheap ripoff of Payday 2. You already know where to find that. Speaking of which, this video brought something that I found very funny to my attention. Throughout the entirety of the Notoriety video, Eclipse talked about the game is not okay. He mentioned how copying Payday 2 one for one is really bad, as it takes actual work from the developers of Payday 2 and resells it for a profit on the Roblox platform. You can already tell where I'm going with this. This is literally a direct contradiction to the entry point video in almost every way. EP wasn't close enough to Payday 2, so it's a bad game. Notoriety is way too much like Payday 2, so it's a bad game. So where does he draw the line? What kind of game does he want to see? How much of a ripoff does he want for it to be a, considered a good game? Look, I understand the point behind this review. Something tells me Eclipse was being harassed by his fans to review this Roblox game, and he did exactly what the people wanted. But the entire video feels like a rush review from a video game journalist who never took the time to actually play the game. In some ways, though, making this video brings a completely different perspective on how I see the game in 2023. It reminded me how exciting the game used to be when it was being developed, and how much has changed since then. It also taught me how the game is viewed by a newer player now, with the confusing story and frustrating mechanics. I know Eclipse plans to release a follow-up on his entry point video, and I'm curious how he sees the game, especially after the notoriety video he just uploaded. That's all I have to say for now, though. And Eclipse, if you're watching, I have a really cool lore video here.